So I love to, uh, you know, play games, right? That's something I love doing. So I'll just talk about uh, something uh, which is about games and large language models and diffusion and everything together, right? So this is something I was reading about a couple of weeks back. Um, essentially, it's a paper as well as um, an interactive demo that you can actually try out, right? So I, I love applied AI. So... Uh, there's also a paper that you can go and read about this, which is something I would definitely recommend that everybody uh, does over here, right? So the paper is right here. It's uh, from folks at Google Research, Tel Aviv uh, University, DeepMind, and so on, the usual folks. And um, the original paper was actually a couple of years old, and this is the latest version. Uh, they've kind of uh, found, found a lot of interesting outputs, right? So this is from August. But the, uh, the original paper is also worth a read, right? Because it, it goes into some of the details. But what are we talking about, right? We're talking about how they've used different models and different uh, engines to create a game which is fully created on the fly, right? Um, so till now, what happens, right? If you're playing a game, right, or reading a book, right? Essentially, what happens is somebody has thought about the game, or the book, right? They've thought about the script, the actors, um, and essentially then created it, right? You're you're living somebody else's perspective or dreams or or reality in some ways, right? Or a team's collaboration, right? Um, so what these guys have done is they have created um, a game which is created on the fly, right? Um, so. If you're not aware, right, Doom is a game that was released in the 1990s. It was one of the first games that was launched. Um, I wouldn't call it a 3D game. It's actually what they call a 2.5D game. So it's it looks 3D, but it's not, right? It's It has all these sprites and stuff. But essentially, it's a very simple uh, structure, right? So you're not really creating 3D objects, right, like models and so on. But you're creating 2D sprites. So that's something which is easy to do today, right? You have all these different models, like Stable Diffusion, right? It's an open source model, which you can use to create sprites, right? Um, and Doom is a fairly popular game and people have played it and created a lot of mods on it. But what they have done is uh, they, have, they have kind of created this whole architecture, right? I'll just kind of explain what's happening over here, right? You can actually load up the game, right? And it creates the entire game for you on the fly, right? So it's unscripted, right? Um, what's happening over here? So they have got this uh, reinforcement learning engine, right? I'll not go into the details here, but um, essentially uh, the machine has actually played Doom a lot, right? It's open source game now. It's played Doom over and over again. So it knows how uh, things work, right? The mechanics, right? What is, uh, what is the concept of health, right? What is armor? Right? How much ammo do you have? What are the kind of weapons uh, that that are there in the game? What are the entire uh, simulated environments? Right? There are indoor environments, there are external environments. So the game is actually played, um, the model has actually played the game a lot and understood about what's going on. Right? What are the different components of the game? And what does it mean for a player to play the game? Right? If I'm going through, there's a monster, I hit it, my health goes down, right? or I lose ammo. It's understood that, right? So there's, there's this very interesting um, um, reinforcement learning model which does that, right? Once it does that, it passes on its learnings to a generative uh, image model, very similar to stable diffusion, right? It's actually stable diffusion. And it creates 20 frames um, per second of whatever the, you know, the reinforcement learning uh, model is actually telling it, right? So essentially, if you're in a certain place, right, um, and you're moving around, right, uh, based on what has happened in the last couple of seconds, it actually creates the next frames for you, 20 uh, frames a second, it just creates and kind of simulates that for you, right? So if you're moving in front, right, um, it kind of determines what your future will be, where you will go, and then creates the entire simulation, the entire environment for you, um, and figures out what the image will look like, right? And then feeds it back into the, the model and, and creates the next few frames, right? So what, what happens over here essentially is it creates the entire game on the fly for you, right? Um, why is this kind of interesting? Because this means that 
you know, you can have all these different environments that you don't have to create from scratch. You can train um, models on different environments. It could be cities, it could be uh, other games or uh, even books, right? And based on generative AI, you could fill in the gaps or let's say you're, you want to create a, a, a comic, right? You give it some idea of what the comic should be. And then as you read it and you as you get more uh, engrossed in certain sections, it could kind of create that book forever for you. You could have a book that you can have, you know, reading and reading and based on what you've liked, it will create plot twists and uh, fill in the gaps in such a way that you'll, you'll kind of read the book forever, right? I don't know if that makes sense, right? Um, which is the super interesting bit, right? It, it uses already existing technology like reinforcement learning, stable diffusion to create this never ending loop of sorts, which is uh, super interesting. Of course, this model is not perfect. There's a lot of hallucination. And so after you play the game for about a minute or so, right, um, it kind of starts to hallucinate, right? So um, um, it it takes you places that probably are not correct, right? Um, uh, so for example, if you walk into a door, right, uh, it creates this room for you, right? But if you walk out of the door right then, right, you just go back, it takes you back to the right place. But if mm. you've been in that room for, let's say, a minute, you've done a lot of activities, you go back, the original room might not be completely as per your uh, expectation. There might be new things which are there, right? Uh, but the surprising thing is, you know, your health, ammo, all the the core aspects, the mechanics of the game, right, which are the, the most important things, are actually functional, right? So the game state is preserved, right, and uh, fairly accurate, right, which is incredible. Uh, but yeah, it does hallucinate like most uh, generative models, right? Super interesting. A lot of uh, implications for the future, right? Does it mean um, there won't be game developers? I don't think so. Or there won't be storytellers. I think that will be obvious there. But probably, right, it's more easier than ever to create levels of stories or plot twists, um, to create interesting encounters, right? And uh, there's so many other applications, right, in different fields, wherever you're writing content, right, uh, the way that you could train um, AI to create content without you necessarily telling it everything or creating the assets is, is incredible, right? So again, uh, definitely check it out. This entire thing is called Game Engine. Uh, the paper is titled uh, Diffusion Models are Real-Time Game Engines, which is incredible, but... Uh, the concept itself is called Game Engine. It's open sourced, right? If you want to run this, of course, you need a, a fairly beefed up PC. You need TPUs and stuff, uh, which is difficult to run locally, right? Uh, but definitely the code is open source. You can definitely check it out. At some point, this will be able to run on your system as well, right? Uh, yeah. Saranay any I have thoughts? I have two questions, Soham. Yes, sir. Two very pressing questions. Number yes. one. Have you tried this already? Number two, has it been on Prince of Persia? Because that's the only thing I want to see in reality, right? So you watched the second question, uh, Serenia? Have, have you done, have you made it on Prince of Persia? Because I want to see Prince of Persia. Oh, absolutely. So this is actually tougher than Prince, right? Uh, I haven't played this because it requires a beefy hardware, right? It's, it's running yeah. uh, reinforcement learning plus... Uh, staple diffusion, it generates 20 frames in real time, then plays it back before you know, right? As you're pressing the button in that, uh, That's amazing. right? In that entire time, the entire thing is getting processed and fed back to you, right? So it, it yeah. requires a lot of processing power right now. I'm thinking Prince of Persia would be easier because it's a 2D environment. You're just going from left to right. Oh, yeah, right, actually. So yeah. it should be or easier to do. Or maybe this is the time to make a 3D version of Prince of Persia because really... That's the true sorrow of our childhood. That we never got to a proper 3D version. Of there it. are 3D versions, I mean. What? But you haven't How played. old am I? Are you serious? Yeah, yeah lots, stop. lots. No. Listen, I, think... I stopped playing it like in the 8th grade. And then after that, whatever development has happened, I've ignored it. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm sure, right? This will happen to platformers and other things. So much innovation yeah. happening in AI, right? Like, maybe you can speak to a you know person who's selling you stuff in a game and then have a conversation about something, right? So, so many interesting yeah. things this is amazing. This is super interesting. Thanks for sharing it so home. I think it kind of you know, brings back... Uh, so I'm a very casual gamer. Like I'm not a, like a hardcore gamer. But my son kind of, you know, he plays a like, you know, lot of games out of it. 
and often i kind of you know we associate playing game a pc game at the time was kind of you know, a way of challenging i think those games are challenge so you kids would like to be challenged because they prove okay i can do things out of it so i think it's there's a little bit of learning as well and for me the while gameplay is one very very interesting aspects of it game designing is another completely field out of it and this kind of gives you that ability so imagine you be able to create like you know a flappy bird or maybe you be able to create like you know even simple games like tic tac toe and be able to understand the logic how things have worked so for me it's a phenomenal uh, way to kind of you know understand how games are built and designed out of it second thing it also kind of you know takes that complexity away from you of knowing the know how of computer graphics and some of the things and focus on the logic and, and things out of it so that is a another super interesting uh, because many time what happens is that people might have an logic or idea about what gameplay should look like but they don't have other skills to be able to kind of you know try and build things out of it so i think that's a super super interesting in, in, in my perspective you're absolutely right dishant in fact you know uh, if you read the uh, the details of the researchers here right none of them are game developers it's very oh, wow. interesting right so the model is just just like you know uh, like go and all these other things right deep mind actually figured out right like the computer figured out the model figured out how to play it so the entire mechanics the uh, so it's a very organic pipeline from understanding what is happening so it's reading right it the reinforcement model actually sees how the the graphics are getting created from that it takes to recreation right so it doesn't know about how the code was kind of Uh, the mechanics were cre- was created right so you're absolutely correct right so um it's just that that pipeline of learning and creation is is super simple right yeah. yeah super nice and i'm pretty hopeful i think while i do understand and it's not just specific to a diffusion architecture or anything i think we have seen a bit of hallucination in many different architecture which is out there and i think i think the one thing what i would like to highlight here is that and i kind of maybe over emphasize again and again is that well ai is still in very early nation stages out of it correct the more it becomes mature many of the things like you mentioned an ability to kind of you know remember or maybe how you craft a prompt or how do you basically give a command out of it maybe it could remember uh, like you know which room i was previously and then try to kind of you know go back and things are open so that's a one way to look at it or maybe dynamic games correct like imagine yeah. the you are into a game like how life is not scripted correct yep. like the game is also not scripted and you kind of you know jump into that and, and try to figure things out so yeah i mean super nice thank you for sharing it very exciting 